Variables are great because they give us a place to store the numbers that describe our programs. But as our programs run, the values in our variables change. If those numbers go wrong, our sketches will also go wrong. When that happens, we want to find out the values of our variables, so we can find out which ones have the wrong values, and then we can figure out why and fix them. Here's a blank processing sketch. To print something, we use the function print, P-R-I-N-T. It's a keyword, so as soon as we type it, it automatically turns orange. Following the print statement, we have a pair of parentheses, and as always at the end, a semicolon. Whatever we want to print goes between the parentheses. Let's print the short text message, I like bananas. To tell processing to print these letters exactly the way I've typed them, we wrap this message in double quotes. This tells processing that this is a little string of characters, rather than, say, three variables named I and like and bananas. We'll talk more about strings later. For now, just surround any little message that you want to type, like this, in double quotes. You'll see that processing has recognized it as a string because it turns blue. Now I'll run this little program. Our message shows up here in the output area. I like bananas. Beautiful. Now notice that this is in white. If you've seen any of the videos on errors, you've seen that errors get reported in this window using red type. But our output shows up in white like this. Also notice that we don't see the double quotes. They aren't part of the string, they're just the way we identify the string to processing. I'll stop the program. And now, let's print out the value of a variable. So, I'll create an integer called number of bananas, and I'll give it the starting value of 5. I'll now put number of bananas into the print statement and run the program. Sure enough, we get a 5 in the output area. Beautiful. Now, let's print a float. I'll make a float called weight of bananas and set it to 8.3 pounds. Now I'll copy and paste this into the print statement and run it, and we get 8.3 in white. Great, let's print both variables. Now to keep the lines from getting too long, I'll remove the of bananas part. We'll just print the number of bananas and then the weight. Let's run the program. The output is 58.3. Okay, that's crazy. So, what's going on? Well, of course, this is just an accident of the typography. This isn't really the number 58.3. It's the number 5, followed immediately by the number 8.3. Processing didn't put a space between the numbers because we didn't tell it to. It only prints what we explicitly tell it to print. We can put a blank space between them just by telling processing to print a string that contains a single space. Let's run this and we get 5 space 8.3. Okay, much better. We've seen character strings in our print statements, but it turns out that we can store those strings in a special kind of variable called a string with a capital S. We'll talk much more about strings later, but for now, Let's just assign the string variable, called kind, with a string manzano. This is a kind of banana that has an apple-strawberry flavor. Now, we'll print a little sentence, which I will summarize first as a comment. I have some number of some kind of bananas weighing some number of pounds. Well, we can print this out easily. We just print out each of the pieces. When we run it, they all run together again, because I forgot to put spaces around the various pieces. So I'll stop the program, I'll put the spaces in there, run it again, and it comes out just right. So far, each print statement has been printing just one thing. It turns out that we can tell print to print out a whole bunch of things, one after the other, all with just one call to print. This helps us save some lines in our program. If we just list all the things we want to print in a row and run the program, we'll get an error. To get print to understand what we want, we need to glue the pieces together with a plus sign. 
The plus sign here doesn't mean addition. Instead, it just means put these pieces of the list together. It might have been better if the language had used some other character for this instead of a plus sign, but almost all the characters on the keyboard are already being used for something. So the plus sign was chosen, and now it means two things, addition and putting strings together. You'll never get confused by these two different uses and neither will processing. If we run this, we get success. So let's put together the next few lines too. I'll put spaces around the plus signs because I think that makes it a little easier to read. Those are just for us. If you don't want those spaces, you don't need them. When we run the program, it looks great. Now we could put all of this print stuff together in one huge line if we wanted, but I'm using two lines so it all fits nicely in the window for you. Processing offers another print statement that automatically starts a new line after it prints its arguments. And you're going to use this other print statement much, much more than print itself. So let's take a look at it. To get things rolling, I'll comment out the two print statements we already have, and I'll bring back our two statements to print the number of bananas and the weight of the bananas. Running this, we see the two results, one right after the other on the same line. To tell processing to end the line when it's done printing, we use a different command. Instead of print, we use the command print line. In a perfect world, print line would be written like this, P-R-I-N-T-L-I-N-E. But notice that word is still black, so processing doesn't recognize that as a keyword. It turns out that processing shaves off the last two vowels from this command. It simply drops the last I and E and leaves the first I in there. It's crazy. It's just a weird, arbitrary thing. But the print line command is written like this. P-R-I-N-T-L-N. And you can see it turned orange. You're going to use print line so much that eventually this will become completely familiar to you. So until it becomes second nature, you're just going to have to remember to write print line with this weird spelling. I'll add another line for the kind of banana and run that. Each print statement appears on its own line because once each call to print line is complete, the cursor moves down and to the left. You'll probably find yourself writing lines that look like these last three lines all the time. I know I do. When things start to look wrong, I print out all the variables that I think are involved and I look at their values. If something doesn't look right, that gives me a clue to know where I should go looking for a problem. When you print things, I recommend that you use print line. Remember that print line is written P-R-I-N-T-L-N and you'll be fine.